We, the medical profession, are absolutely tied to knowing the name of a tumor and its position, anatomical position, before we can treat it. But we no longer do that with Lipitor, where we treat or prevent heart attacks and, and really don't have to know the anatomical position of the plaques. But we did, not now. And we are no longer tied to knowing the position or the type of infection. We, we often just treat the white blood count and, and, and so forth. So the question is, can you treat cancer like that? And um, it's not clear, but we think there's a way to do that. When tumors switch on angiogenesis, and that was that, that idea came in the 90s, when they switch on angiogenesis it, from having been non-angiogenic for years, um, we have all, everyone's assumed that that's permanent. And now we've found that about 5% can switch it off and go backwards. And they're doing it all the time, but you can't tell because most of the tumor cells are angiogenic, so the tumor goes on growing 60, 70, or 80 percent of its cells are angiogenic, but a small group is switching backwards, going to non-angiogenic. So that's a very important finding, reversal of angiogenesis. So if nature can do it, we would just like to increase the percentage. Well, I think they'll be used, first of all, more and more widely in combination. Right now, of course, they have to be tested alone with chemotherapy and without it. And, and gradually they're being combined because the inhibitors we have are, are very, very uh, tremendous breakthroughs, but they generally are very narrow. So they treat like um, VEGF or one angiogenic factor, but tumors keep adding things. They keep using different angiogenic factors, proteins, and it will be useful to combine these. And after we the, med the profession learns that experience. Like we used to just use, in the 40s, they used penicillin by itself. You wouldn't do that today. You'd have penicillin plus something else or three drugs. Then the next step will be to, s to move over to the very broad angiogenesis inhibitors. None of them are in the clinic yet, but they've been discovered. And we had capillostatin is one and endostatin is another. And there are 26 others in the body. The angiogenesis inhibitors are approved in 28 countries now besides the U.S. And so we're learning, first of all, that there's very little, very few side effects. So the patients find it very comfortable to be treated for cancer. That's the first huge change, and they do not want to go back to any other treatments. So we have patients who play golf, get their strength back, go back to work, and yet are being treated every day with an angiogenesis inhibitor. Um, then the second thing we found is that there's less drug resistance than with standard chemotherapy, so they can keep taking these drugs. Patients have been on thalidomide for five years for multiple myeloma, uh, on endostatin for three and a half years for other tumors. Uh, so so that, that's a very exciting to the oncologist. And then the third thing is that when you have treatment that's non-toxic or relatively non-toxic, so that you can give it for long times, like tamoxifen. It raises the question of whether if you could diagnose the tumor really early uh, you, by a blood test, a biomarker, or a urine test, a biomarker in the urine, that maybe you could um, treat the blood tests and never see the tumor. This is all in the future, but that's what scientists have to, you, you have to actually imagine what it might be and see if you can get there.